Madame Chair, Luda, probably right when they tell you that you can be French and Muslim. But what we want to tell you is that you can also be Muslim and not necessarily publicly display your religion. Three points on extension. One, how religion can, how this is perfectly legitimate considering that religion can be interpreted in different ways and how religious leaders already do this. Two, how backlash will most likely not happen. Three, how your community remains strong. Before that, rebuttal. One, we tell you the reason why it is often hard to accept these people is because a lot of Western states are based on radical secularism. See France, for instance. We tell you that even ones that do, ex do express religion publicly, it is not done to an extent which is seen as extreme by the majority population. The issue with this is that once those people publicly display their religion, the the majority group is unlikely to want to interact with them precisely because they see them as so different from them. This is what creates problems and lack of understanding. They tell us they'll get accepted in time. No, false, because one, I already just said that because they never even have that interaction to begin with, but two, because those groups usually remain very small and very interconnected without without the will to engage with the majority. Look at the example of Ireland and Northern Ireland, where even two Catholics and Protestants lived together for hundreds of years, you still have the troubles in the second part of the 20th century. We don't think they just change it with time. No. So, then they tell us, yeah, but what if I want to pray and, and say, what if I want to pray in school, but I can't do? Now, here's the deal. Religious leaders can tell you, okay, if you have to work, you can miss one prayer a day. The same way as it is more important to pray on Friday than on other days. The same way as the evening prayer is the most important one. Religion can already be interpreted. The same way that if you have a dietary problem, you can be allowed to withhold from the Ramadan fasting. The point is that that can already get interpreted. No, thank you. Let me tell us, you're more likely to identify with the majority state if you say have prayer rooms. But the issue here is that you already have a huge stigma on you by the majority when you go into those prayer rooms. You already thought, why are you doing there? Why are you praying five times a day when we have no need to do that? Even if that is built, you, you have an issue. But moreover, those things are even unlikely to happen in the status quo. France bans burqas. Switzerland almost banned minarets. It was overturned by the ECHR. Those states are already quite against them. So, legitimacy. We tell you, Madam Chair, that religion is about achieving your own link with God. And they never tell to us why it is necessary to publicly display your religion in order to do so. Firstly, recognize that a lot of Muslims can pray at home and do precisely that because it is your prayer and your public display of religion is about you achieving your link with God. It is not a necessity for you to display that in public. Two, we tell you that religion always adapts to outside circumstances. Recognize that Turkey banned burqas and public displays of Islamic symbols during uh, Mehmet Ataturk and it did not lead to Islam and Turkey becoming even more extreme nor becoming, nor people feeling alienated from it. So we, tell you, we also tell you that a lot of Western religions already incorporated a lot of pagan customs from before into it. So we also tell you that progressive leaders, and this is where we want to get to the point of leaders, say the, the new pope is quite a progressive person in comparison with the previous one. True, he has alienated some people, but people still accept him. Why? Seven reasons. First, <laughs> we think that people have respect for institutions that have been there for a very long time, like churches. Two, extreme leaders find it very hard to gain traction because they have to fight in order to gain a group which they can speak to. Recognize that these people still go to churches. A church, going to a church or to a mosque is not a public display of religion. So what's the point there? This leader, the only difference now is that these leaders interpret religion in a way in which they tell you, okay, don't publicly displayed. The norms which you already expected, uh, respected, still remain there. That leader already still has your respect because the vast majority of norms are the ones which you already accepted in the first place. Four, we tell you that if you, ha you have to look at the comparative when you talk about extremists. Even, while, even if some extreme groups do come up, we tell you it's more likely to happen when that group is constantly alienated by the majority state so that they feel that they cannot integrate. That's when you have extreme groups which rise up, but those yes. are against the majority state. That's when you have things like the 7th of July bombing in the UK. So, 
last, last we want to tell you that you have good results from this policy because at this moment, the majority state is more likely to accept these people. Why? Because there is often an impression that they do not want to integrate at all. That they want to live in their own microcosmatic world. Well, how does this change it? A lot of people in majority religious groups will see this as an act of good faith, I'll take closing in a second, which leads to them being more prone to accept these people. Closing. Given that you recognize that religious minorities are often already alienated from society, why don't we alienate them more when we tell them you need to change your religion right now on our terms because otherwise you're not good enough to participate no, in our no. society? It's not on our terms. It's on the terms that your religious leader, the person you already because those religious leaders are precisely ones that that community respects. And lastly, those people are often seen, seen as an interpreter of the word of God on earth. So people don't necessarily have a tendency to question what they say. A lot of Catholics may privately disagree with the Pope's views on homosexuality, but that has not alienated them from the Catholic Church. Why the community remains strong and doesn't go away? Because still the main bonds that these people have are with their own cultural group. They still speak the main the language that our group speaks. They're also, their family and social circle is still there. They also have community gatherings in churches and mosques, or synagogues for that instance. What we tell you there is that those communities remain stronger, but the majority group is more likely to, be see, to see them as willing to integrate, and they're more, less likely to otherize them, because at this moment, those groups look far more similar to them. Because the vast majority of Western states are secular, and we are used to that kind of secularism for, for hundreds of years. And even when you have public displays of religion, like the wearing of crosses, a lot of people don't give that much importance to it, and it is seen something which is more of a tradition than a pure public expression of religion. Madam Chair, you can be religious without displaying that publicly. These leaders continue having respect. Very proud to propose.